Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today we are taking a look at our peripheral for a machine I particularly love. One of my favourite machines I own. Uh, it's not the greatest console in the world, but I think it is one of the most impressive, and that's the Vectrex. Uh, just for its screen, really. In person, it just it looks fantastic. As, even if people were, were prefer to see things with more colour on the screen, I still I do love it. But one of the peripherals it had early on were a 3D glasses uh, technology, which used a kind of shuttering technique to display uh, a 3D effect. Now, the original one used a disc with coloured um, portions to help it to show the different frames. But, um, yeah, they're way too expensive to buy. <laughs> they go for a very ridiculous amount of money on, um, uh, on eBay and stuff. But you can build an alternative. In fact, you can build the almost a replica of the original one using people view disc man parts, but also you could just use motors and stuff. But that's a little bit complex and... Maybe I'll do one down further down the line. But we have one that uses a much si uh, simpler effect and just uses existing shutter glass technology that you used to use on older style televisions. Um, so, yeah, there's a design online. So let's try and build one. Right, so here we are with a pair of uh, pan yeah, Panasonic. Uh, oh, let me read this. TYER3D5MA Active Shutter 3D Glasses. Now the wiki for this project actually mentions the previous model, the 4MA, but I don't think it matters. I think as long as there's active shutter lenses and you can control them, then it should be fine. Uh, hopefully that's all true with this pair. <laughs> now we need to get to where they're actually powering the, the glasses, which is it's going to be around here somewhere because this is where the bulge is, so it must be the same as the previous model. Uh, there's obviously a battery in there because we can see the battery isolator already in place, which is good. So I guess the first step, let's just open up this battery cover. That would be the probably the easiest thing to try first. All right, let's see if we have any more success. There we go. All right. So, that's the battery contacts out, but it's not really showing us anything else, but there are some more screws now, so let's try getting those open. take the lenses out but I don't think we're going to be able to <laughs> I mean worst case scenario we might end up having to buy new ones to do the project but at least we'll find out the information we need in this in this set right they're kind of stuck onto the frames using some sealant there we go that's the that's the assembly. So we either just stick wires onto there as it is, or we take it off the board and try to connect wires directly to the flat flex. That might be easier actually, because it means that the rest of the circuitry won't be getting in the way. It just can we solder onto those wires. And I mean, someone's already soldered to it onto the board, so why not? I think that's what we try. We try removing the board. All right. So, this old board was really designed to power this and also to get the signal wirelessly. Obviously, we don't need any of that. So, yeah. So, we just really need the the lenses that are the only important part. What we need to do then is to attach wires to each of these. Now it doesn't matter how 
how those wires are attached as long as it's I guess the same really is the best so they go that way which means you're upside down there we go so as long as we attach the wires the same orientation on both sides we should be okay I'll drop that now we'll use some thin wire for that this hello come on what are we doing here How's this got so tangled up Never mind. <clears throat> okay, so I guess this yellow stuff will do one. go in theory that's the hardest part of that done in theory that may not work still of course <laughs> right, so let's put the lenses back in come on So there we go, and also what we'll do is we will lay them flat and then we'll just apply a bit of captain tape on that just to hold them in place. Right, there we go. It is back together at least, that's one thing. <laughs> Will it work? Well, we'll find that out at some point. Right, we're gonna set to take this down as well. It's not gonna look the best, obviously, but it's gonna be, it's at least gonna mean that this doesn't, well, hopefully rip apart at the first sign of trouble. So here's our actual setup then. Here we have our 3D shutter glasses, just standard television ones. These are, I mentioned whilst building it, these are Panasonic TYER 3D 5MAs, but like I said, anything that's got shutter um, lenses should work. You, you can always, as long as you can find the points to power them, then uh, they should just work. Uh, yeah, our board, which is, uh, yeah, <laughs> a bit of a, yeah, an interesting mess. Uh, I think what we'll, um, if we can get this working properly, it's not working entirely properly yet. I'll get onto that in a second. Um, we may make a circuit board, just make it a little bit neater more than anything. Um, yeah, we did add in the 12 volt power lead, but we can't get that working. I think one of the enable pins is wrong somewhere in there. I, I haven't found anything, but I'll, I'll need to find out which one it is. I think something's not being either pulled up or pulled down that should be. Um, and this is our Mega Drive lead. This came from a cheapy Chinese Mega Drive console when you see we've had to shave it back. So you don't really have to go this extreme to be honest, but it just needs to not have a big ridge here. This needs to be quite thin all the way down. So you have to cut some off being careful with the knife, obviously children. Um, yeah, you have to kind of use a Mega Drive cable um, most not most, but a lot of the consoles that used those Atari-style um, connectors, they didn't have all the pins connected, and so they'll miss a few of the pins you actually need, even though you need three of them. Well, technically you need two of them. One isn't actually connected in the software yet, which is the sync one, but I did connect all three. So you can see we put that onto a nice little header there so we can remove that cable when we want to play with it, uh, mainly because we've got this <laughs> that's a mess of a cabling solution here. Uh, are you going to focus on that camera? Probably not. 
But anyway, yeah, so it's, um, you've been cutting the wires off because I, I was considering maybe putting the, the gamepad back together again. But it's a cheap thing I got off eBay, so it doesn't really matter either way. Um, I might try and do another Vectrex thing with it, who knows? So yeah, keeping it in one piece was a, I felt a good idea. Uh, yeah, so just buy a cheap Mega Drive, uh, cable, uh, controller from eBay and just rip that apart. So if we just kind of, we'll focus down on this board a little bit. There you go. So you can see we're using an Arduino Nano here. Obviously any Arduino should do the job. As long as you have the uh, digital pins, you only need a few of them. You can always change it in software if you want to use different pins. Uh, there's a button over here, which is just used to tell the Vectrex that it's time to, to start the game. That also starts off the, uh, the shutter glasses. So there's a bit of synchronization there. So you know the game is starting at the same time as the glasses start. Um, and yeah, I was a, a little driver chip here. That's kind of really it. Then it's mostly wiring. <laughs> it's not. It's not a terribly complicated circuit. It's just a circuit that's got a lot of connections. So um, you end up with a lot of wires. I like to try to keep them mostly on the top. So as you can see, whilst there is a little bit of bridging and stuff on the bottom, most of the actual wires are on the top. Now these really thin wires here, I use them just because they're easier to solder onto the uh, lens points. Um, but they are obviously quite delicate as well, and they're just a mess because they're, they're huge. I did them quite long. I don't know why, because I ended up doing the Mega Drive cable quite long, so this could technically just be sellotaped to the glasses and it would stay there. Um, for now, I'm powering this using the Arduino's 5 volts. Uh, I could also power it from the 5 volts I think the Vectrex sends out, pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, obviously the ideal is to power it using the actual driver chip but uh, until I can work out what's not being pulled out or pulled up, uh, I will be doing that. But it does kind of work, which I will now show you. Right, so here we are by the Vectrex. Now, first of all, what we'll do is we'll turn the Vectrex on, obviously. Um, again, the, the biggest crime of the Vectrex is you really cannot see, give it full justice on a video. The vines just don't pop as much as they do in real life. But we'll turn her on. <laughs> now, you can see the glasses just in the front there and then doing nothing obviously this low narrow escape now what it'll do is go blank and do nothing so it's waiting for input from the actual controller but we have our button what our button should do is two things it should start the game and there we go and you can see the glasses are also flickering now <laughs> I can't really show you 3D effects but I can kind of lift the glasses up to give you an idea of what it's trying to achieve you can see the kind of the flickering it won't work, obviously, for, for people on looking for a camera, but you can kind of get an idea of what it's trying to achieve. And you can kind of see stuff is a little bit limited. The flickering isn't quite as much when you're looking through the lenses. And that's that. And it's it works okay. It really does. It's um, I doubt it's as effective as <laughs> the original glasses plus you don't get the kind of weird color wheel thing which added some splash of color to it as well but it does kind of work uh, and it's it's pretty impressive for a free github project as well uh obviously links to it will be underneath but uh yeah it's well worth picking up and uh, playing with if you've got a vectrex uh and it's not a bad project to put together either if perhaps a tiny bit frustrating occasionally right <laughs> on that note Let's go, uh, let's finish up the video. And there we have it, just a, a fun little video, just to show a fun little project. Uh, yeah, if you um, have got a Vectrex, then I uh, include the links to the GitHub down below. Uh, it's well worth making it. It doesn't take much, and uh, it's, it's, it's a fun project. Um, I think probably if you get it right, <laughs> like whatever I've done wrong, I will work that one out. Um, and you run it through the 12 volts, it looks like you will get a slightly better 3D effect because it can make the lenses blacker uh, because it can put a little bit more charge through. So, um, yeah, that may it may make it better, but it's still quite effective as it is, um, considering this too. So I think, yeah, it's a, it, it's a good one. And maybe I'll build one of the, uh, the exact replicas of the, the actual uh, 3D images 
glasses, glasses with the dial and disc and stuff with colours on it. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. There's a few projects online to do that. So we might do that. But yeah, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Again, just a very simple video. Just kind of a... We've been doing some like heavy duty refurbishments on multiple machines. So I think we just try and do something a little bit different just to kind of uh, reset ourselves. Uh, we're still waiting for parts for the sword on that note. Uh, just uh, I'm going to get some... I think the, I think it's the tantalums. I said it in the previous one, I think the tantalums are, are, are wonky on most of the machine, so I'm going to have to try and find all of the replacements for those. So I'm just after that, it's a little bit tricky at the moment with um, the many things happening in England. <laughs> it, it means that a lot of components are quite hard to source or are just taking a very long time to arrive. So um, hopefully they'll arrive at some point and we'll be able to continue with the sword. Um, I do have another video for the sharp coming up, and I've done a few of those, hence why we do this little break in the middle. <laughs> and it's a very similar video to this as well, involving very similar technology, but uh, a slightly more official one this time. Uh, I think that'll be fun as well, hopefully. And I might revisit the Auric as well, because I managed to get hold of an Auric one, which I didn't have for my original Auric video. Uh, so maybe I'll kind of go over those again, but in a different way. I obviously won't just repeat the last video. We'll do something a bit different. Anyway, <laughs> if you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. Obviously hit down like, dislike if you want to, but do at least explain why. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. The present is horrible. The future looks bleak. Remember our childhood to get us through the week. We're getting re-enthused Back to the past and the things we used We all know that our pasts were great Escaping the things that today we hate Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused